Well, um, yes, I heard you, you played beautifully the minuet uh, and the passapier by the Sweet Bergamas by Debussy. It's really nice music. We all know the Claire de Lune, that is the most uh, uh, famous of these pieces, one of the most famous pieces of the piano literature. Uh, so we need to think why this music is so beautiful. 
uh, almost intoxicatingly beautiful because um, uh, it's a music that, that Debussy composed in the early stage of of his creation of his uh, early early part of his composing activity, and uh, um, he was developing a personal style. So the style that was uh, um, mostly played and composed in the time of the BC was the, the German music, Wagner opera, big symphonic poems, symphonies. Um, and the BC just rediscovered old uh, forms like the suites, like dances, like the minuet, like the passapier. So this is like that reminds us Bach, but before Bach, it's, there is Lully and all the French composers. So it's like uh, uh, looking back <laughs> to the old times. That's why if you want to, if you want to see, to know more about this poetic period, period just uh, in the literature, you can look at the Parnassians. Paul Verlaine brought this fête galant, and there is this poem, Claire de Lune, uh, that, that talks about mask and Berga mask. Uh, it was mm, it was sort of a legend that the mask of the Arlequin, this kind of mask, came from Bergamo, uh, the city the city in the north of Italy, you know, on the edge of the of the state of uh, of the Republic of Venice, no? and then they went to Venice to do the, the theater. Um, so uh, that's why Berga mask. No, it's like a, um, a reminder to us. Of the of the masks and the theater and all these people who, who who like sing about ideal love. That's what Verlaine wrote, eh? the poet Verlaine. Uh, the, the masks that sing about the ideal love, but they don't believe it, but they sing about it. So this is the ideal of the Parnassians. Why this music is so beautiful? It's beautiful because uh, because it's what the Parnassians say is the art for the sake of art. So they were like, uh, devote everything to the beauty, even more than the final message. So that's what Debussy is in. Uh, we also have the, the, the story that Debussy took his first piano lesson by the mother-in-law of Paul, Ver Paul Verlaine. And if you want to know more about Paul Verlaine, there is a beautiful movie uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio that is called Total Eclipse. I will <laughs> I recommend you to see it. But let's talk now about uh, about your interpretation, which was really good. I think that your minuet um, could be more flowing. Just remember that uh, there is the, it's written andantino. Andante, we need to think, and sometimes we, we do that, we, we think, uh, we do the mistake to think that andante is a sort of slow movement. But really andante in Italian, what, do you know what andante means? Well, I think. I think it's it also the same in Spanish. Walking. Exactly, it means walking. So we walk, we don't walk so slow usually. So andante means low, uh, walking, no? It means doing. And andantino, it's, all, it's walking faster. Okay. So if we think in three, andantino, this, is, this goes a little faster, I think. Okay. So, and the other thing we can think about in general, it's about the uh, slurs. Uh, when uh, we have a slur during a long melody, let's say, for example, bar 25, you know. Okay, when we have this kind of melody, we should push it a little bit. And this is like an idea of, uh, the, of phrasing that uh, the bel canto and also Chopin. Uh, introduced and, and Debussy was really into the Chopin uh, sound, the Chopin aesthetics in, in his uh, music education. Uh, why don't we start from the beginning? Let's start to, to look for a pianissimo, eh, for more pianissimo uh, uh, at, at the beginning. Uh, Debussy he uses a lot of piano, più piano, pianissimo. Uh, and più pianissimo also, so we also need to do certain tricks to get all the all the shades that we need. Uh, let's start from the beginning a little bit and a little faster. Just one thing before you start at bar five. 
get this third, okay? They're really difficult to do, but if we focus uh, on the articulation of the fingers that lift, okay? So the fingers was not playing, eh? we can help to play with more precision and with pianissimo, which is really difficult here, but we can do it. Uh -huh. Just think about the fingers that lift, eh? that mm -hmm. helps the finger that actually play when you lift them. Let's go from the beginning. Thank you. Thank you. It's really good. It's really good. In general, I suggest you for this music, a kind of staccato more morbid. Okay, you can use your finger flat and use more wrist. Okay, so starting, for example, for the bass of the beginning. Instead of grasping, because if you grasp in the tip of your finger is hard, you will get a really precise staccato, which could be really good for motor or for other composers. But here we can be more like bouncing. And also here in bar 10. We don't need the, 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 we are not in the classical period. So the same thing we can use, for example, in the mini staccato that we have during these two dances. Okay, for example, let's see bar uh, 18. We don't need to do this kind of precision, okay? Just flat finger, you grasp a little bit and you also bounce with your, with your wrist, okay? Um, let's start again, let's start from, can you start from bar eight? Can you do more the phrasing there? You have slurs there, so. Then hear the pianissimo. You understand? If you keep your finger flat, you can play more pianissimo. So it's more really atmospheric, more interesting. Thanks. That's really, really nice, really good. Okay, um, don't, don't slow down on 14. Eh? Keep going. Sorry. And then here is, we have, when we have a diminuendo, okay, we have a diminuendo molto. If you want to do, sometimes we need to, to think, to be clever when we want to do certain effects. If we see a diminuendo, we need to start forte. We need to start with sound in order to do diminuendo. So in the same moment, in the same spot, we see the word diminuendo, dim. We just think, let's play forte. Same thing with crescendo. In the same moment we see, in the same spot we see crescendo, we think pianissimo, okay? Or something like that. No? We think less, let's play less. So when you go to diminuendo, you go crescendo here. Okay, so we can really, uh, yeah, this, this music is about shades, shades of color. That's why it's called impressionism. Maybe this is early to say impressionism, but it is already. So there is this kind of harmony and uh, this kind of colors and the composers and the Debussy overall. You know, if you see the, the, the late Debussy, it's really incredible about that. Uh, it's a lot of information about how to play this music. So we need to look to the score really carefully 
because sometimes it's easy to, <laughs> it's easy <laughs> to <laughs> i'm saying it uh, ironically but it's easy to do it to in, to uh, perform this music well if we really follow what the composer wrote down to us more than the notes the slurs all the diminuendo the crescendo all the colors they really write a lot of colors so let, let's try to do from 14 and let's do the diminuendo molto Now keep going. It was really good. Let now keep going with remember the morbid staccato, the flat fingers. Use more meat. Okay, here. That's right. tell you something everything was really good uh, but i think we need to play better what uh, what to do here because on 22 on bar 22 debussy write mezzo forte and uh, as i told you debussy like to uh, to grade all the shades piano pianissimo più piano più pianissimo and mezzo forte it's, it's loud now in the debussy ranges Metaphorte is loud, so <laughs> we need to think about that. Uh, and here in 26, he wants, then he put diminuendo, più diminuendo. Uh, he likes this pew thing, it's very <laughs> uh, picky about that. And then 26, he wants piano espressivo. So I think here we almost have to think metaphorte like a forte in order to do all these shades. So metaphorte. <laughs> Piano espressivo, which means the kind of piano that I can hear at the end of the theater when I'm performing. Okay, so it's, it's a piano. Okay, and then when we have these long slurs and this espressivo, we need to think to be a singer or to be a violinist with a bow. And we have to do all these notes with a bow, and the bow is not infinite, but like this much. So if we want to put all this note in the bow, we kind of have to push the phrase. Okay, so whenever you see uh, um, a slur, please push the phrase, it will be more uh, convincing, generally. Uh, let's start from 22. <laughs> and then I, I say practically everything because here we have all the, the slurs. Uh, yeah, let's play the next page. Let's, let's play from, sorry, from 22. Start with forte.
Okay, very good. Just one thing here eh, on 38, just push. Push the, because we have on the left hand, we have the long slur, so. And then molto diminuendo. And here, more bistaccato. Now, I have to tell you one thing about the psychological, uh, the acoustic psychological effect of a pianissimo or a forte. So uh, the public, we, when we listen, we tend to feel the pianissimo uh, like also a, a, a rallentando. When we play something pianissimo, it feels also less, uh, less fast, lower. Okay, so when we play pianissimo, if we don't want to lose the attention eh, of who's listening to us, we want to keep alive the interpretation, we need to push a little bit. So, um, so when you do 46, eh, sorry, sorry. And when we play forte, vice versa we can do exactly the opposite we can keep space so when we play for example 35 we can play in a more larger way so and then we push piano wrong phrases okay this is nothing to do with the metronome of course Metronome is, metronome is good for other things, no? but phrasing, eh? it's like, uh, yeah, it's kind of language that comes from the singer, the bel canto, Chopin. It's, the idea of tempo is much more, uh, I'm going to say, much more flexible. Uh, so let's try to do the pianissimo on 42. Eh? Morbid pianissimo and like uh, really uh, pushing forward. Uh, because it's piano. No, 42? Uh, 43, please. 42, sorry. 42. Mm Only one thing, one more thing. On this left hand chords, try to play the bass a little more and the other two notes, very soft. And you can use a little bit of pedal, okay? You can use the alt pedal, even if it's written staccato because. Because the music then, the piano playing it was really full of pedal, like Chopin, like it was romantic. The music comes from romantic style. This pianism goes from there. So there is always a little bit of pedal. Uh, okay, let's keep going from 50. Right? Now in 50, we, we go in the developmental section of this prelude. So I think we need to take care of the long slurs that are here. Well, so we have this forte, but this forte, the forte, I think this one. Mm. like just the musical episode that has to be uh, not uh, too much detailing but just a big diminuendo each phrase like there is the forte accent and diminuendo forte accent and diminuendo okay because it's just a just section of music that if we play too slow we lose the whole <laughs> the whole form of the, <laughs> the the minuet okay so let's try Now, let's
let me tell you before going to the Passapier on 74, no, sorry, 75, please put some pedal. Don't play so dry there, okay? Dryness is not uh, a virtue anymore, okay? It can be in Beethoven, in Mozart, in Scarlatti, but not in Debussy. Okay, even if writes pauses and staccato, you can also try. <laughs> This music has to be always like embracing you with the sound. Okay, sound has to be always nice. It's a, it's a particular thing of this music. Also, if you go, if you see to some paintings, no, no, they, they try, they, they, they seem like so clear. If you go uh, far from it and then you get closer, you see all no? the little things. That's the same thing. We always have to, to go far to put some pedal no? to see them. Okay, um, okay, then let, let's play together the 83, the forte tre sotenu. This is the maximum point of the piece because it's not a forte and then a diminuendo. It's a sotenu, it means like you have to hold the melody up. So you need to sing. <laughs> let's play a little more of that. Always phrase, okay? So the idea is to start from a point to go to another. Let's try. From 82. Uh, yes, from stress sustenu. Yeah, 82, thanks. Okay, pushing forward was better. And then last thing on the minuet, the, the, the really final, we get a 97 we have pianissimo. And then a nine, uh, 99 we have più pianissimo. And then a one, 102 we have 3P in the glissando. Okay, so let's just be clever and start 99 more like piano. <laughs> really pianissimo so we can do the change and then accent and the glissando really superficial because it's creepy okay don't go don't do this okay just like you're taking off the dust can you do it <laughs> More start piano, start piano mezzo forte there, so we, you can do less. Thank you. Okay, let's talk now about the passapie. Uh, do you know what a passapie is? Do you know what what do you know what is a passapie? Passapie, I don't know. I hope I pronounce it well. Yeah. It's a type of dance, right? What I don't I don't dance. Yeah, it's a dance. It's a dance. Uh, I I I looked what, what was a passapie and it's like the, a dance in three. And here it's in four. So this demonstrates that uh, back in uh, 1890, when this music was written, there was not really, uh, people were not looking about ancient music, really. No? This is all the kind of research that came after it. Uh, so the Passapier is always in three. It's a dance that uh, Bach wrote and Lully was the one who wrote a lot of Passapier. It's in three, eight, six, eight. Uh, so it, yeah, and now here it's it's in four. Actually, uh, Debussy uh, wrote it like uh, the name, the the title Pavan at the beginning, which is another kind of dance, which is like in two or four. No, it's like a, a, a dance coming Pavana 
from Padua, from my city. So it's Bergamo, Padua, they're a close city. <laughs> but yes, now Passapie, uh, we can get the character of Passapie, who was really lively. That we, we can do that. Um, and it's just an idea of looking back to an ideal world, to a pastoral world, to better times, even if it was not true, no? Something before Wagner. <laughs> that was the point of the BC. So um, let's start the beginning. I would like to use this morbid staccato that I told you about, that I told you about in the minuet. So you... I think here uh, we have a classic accompaniment with bass and other two notes of the chords. Okay, try to. Uh, the, um, try to to play a little uh, deeper the bass and a little softer the other note. So you I think in this kind of composition we don't have to worry too much that all the notes came out otherwise we play with tension with our and everything sound so brilliant we don't need such brilliancy here huh? we need more shade so yeah. let me play thank you Okay, Carmen, what, just one little thing. Uh, it's, everything is really good. Uh, what you can do uh, is do the diminuendo here, to push it a little forward and do more diminuendo. So, same thing, same trick that I told you before. Play mezzo forte uh, at the beginning or forte. <laughs> and just fade out, okay? Um, and the other thing is about the accents, okay? Uh, as I told you before in the fourth, the accents always can need a little time to be told. When we, when we want to say something louder and more articulate, we take more time to say it. So when we do this one, okay, you can always wait a little bit uh, before an accent. Just don't play just louder they also a little later of course without exaggerating otherwise it gets mannered but you have this thing and um, it really helps the, the expression of the whole piece uh, and also here when you start here um, I, I, I agree with your choice to put more pedal there because it's more legato eh? it's really good but try always the bass to sound more because it gives more color also to the melody. So we need to think ideally that the melody more, bass more, and what's in the middle, nothing. It's like the Chopin rule, no? If we play this, then... No, the same, we have the bass and the melody and in the middle, all little notes. So this is kind of the same, okay? All that is middle notes, less. <laughs> Let's try. Let's try from the mezzo forte twenty-four. Ok, 
Okay, Carmen, do it. Okay, let me, uh, Carmen. Okay, really good. Okay, yes, I, I, I let you play because you were playing very beautiful. Um, let me tell you also something about the briefs. Okay, here we have phrases. Uh, and I think in this piece, in this piece, we have more phrasing, more slurs, even that in the minuet. And uh, what do we do between the phrases? What like, a singer will do, will breathe. So we need to breathe. Um, going back, for example, to a phrase, to um, some phrases like from 26. Now we have again this minuend, this diminuendo. See what I did? I just, I waited a little bit. I I I, I breathed there. So I'm... so always let's we can uh, we can wait between the phrases. Uh, of course, with the pedal down, uh, um, using all the uh, resonance of the piano, so like this. Wait. Wait. Now we have a long phrase of 49, really long. Also. Another phrase. Now I'm exaggerating, but just to let you know that we have uh, a lot of possibility of manage our time here. So yeah. Okay. And here the character, the dancing character. the sportato for example. Sportato is a clear sign of playing late, like Beethoven. <laughs> the sportato of Beethoven is like a late uh, attack of the sound. Okay, um, good. Let's try to, uh, we can try for from 49 and try to remember to breathe before 53. Yeah, I know, we want to play this one. Okay, yeah, we want to play like this. But it's not written like that. Just let's finish that. So Here, a thing finish and another begin. Okay, just think about that. Sometimes for studying that, I study them with exaggeration. Okay, just to get used, because it's, it's kind of strange. It's not what we, uh, we we will do spontaneously. So I will study like that. It's just a trick of studying. Now we, we when we when we practice we always manipulate ourselves. So let's go a little fast because our time are finishing. So let's try uh, what I wanted to tell you is bar 60. <laughs> careful the pianissimo on 63 it has really to be much more piano than before so it is okay can we try from the 59 this nice theme Ah, 
Carmen, can we do Carmen? 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 Carmen, yes, <laughs> we have the. So can we do the same spot, like with more uh, uh, relaxed, uh, flexible wrist, and also open hand, but relaxed and flat finger. So gently grasping the key, not like it. using this technique, no? Sort of like Horowitz, like think about the Horowitz. <laughs> Let's try how it comes. <laughs> really good really good and then going to uh, 88 uh, i want to point you i want to point out that we have three p and we are in e major so it's like something really out of this earth we are on the moon here okay so we have to play like it is really far so almost not worry if we lose some notes we need to create the sound okay so let's try. And when we go here, sorry, and then molto diminuendo, and went back to the herd. Okay, this accompaniment on the left hand, bar 106. Don't do all the three uh, the same. We have to change color each note. So, okay, this is the thing. So, in general, uh, in general, we need to, uh, I think, uh, take more attention to the phrase into the color of this piece and uh, to push forward uh, forward all the the melodies and the slurs okay i think you are done uh, we are done uh, so we did a great uh, i think you did a great performance and you can play with this this with uh, more expression and uh, more participation also for the people who listen to you it's music that it's worth to see and it's all written BBC wrote a lot of stuff to us to, to perform well. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome to our virtual masterclass mentoring program of the Joaquin Achucaro Foundation. And today Thanks, I'm Sophie. especially happy and proud um, to present one of my favorite legacy pianists, Tommaso Cogato. Thanks. I'm really honored what you said. <laughs> Thank you. A real uh, wonderful teacher and a multifaceted artist. And, um, you know, you've won prizes, top prizes at the Ferrol competition and also at the Iturbi piano competition. And um, you've just been so wonderful. And you're a much sought out chamber musician as well. And now I see you have an extra hat as an administrator, your director of Andalusia Musica. Yes. And uh, so congratulations, really a wonderful trajectory yes. since we last saw each other in Dallas. And thank, thank you, you for introducing this beautiful, wonderful player, Carmen Perez Salmoral. And welcome and beautiful playing. Um, let me start a bit with you, uh, Tommaso. So tell me, uh, you know, since we last saw each other, I said your whole trajectory. So what did you do? You went back to Italy. You were born in Italy. You studied there. You came to Dallas and also studied with Maestro Achucaro. And then can you tell us a bit how you found your path? 
Yes, well, I, I'm, all, I'm always looking for my path, but yes, uh, after we, we, we saw each other in Dallas after I finished that four wonderful year with Maestro Chukaro, which uh, I miss so much those times. I wish I'd go back sometimes to learn more. I'm more ready to learn now, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, after that, uh, I, I went briefly to Cleveland. I studied in CIM briefly. And then um, also before, after my uh, prizes won Perot competition and, uh, and, and various experiences in Spain, also a course with Maestro Chucaro where I played the Brahms Second Concerto with, uh, with Bruno Aprea teaching conducting was great experience. Uh, I always wish to do something to live. Uh, I like the Spanish lifestyle. And um, I, it, it happens that after the parole, I performed in Sevilla and I really liked this town. And I say, okay, I want to live here. I want to do, uh, I want to, to teach here because I like to teach a lot. And I think I can help. So here I am. Uh, so we have, uh, piano private studio we have an academy of other instruments a school music school and uh, i also organize a, a local piano competition eh, with this fundacion avanza uh, avanza foundation uh, which uh, yeah which is quite which works quite well also online but we are like this year in the eighth edition one this, yeah so, That's really impressive. And then and on the side, I also concertize. I, I do any kind of uh, things where I can help. I like to I like to make music. <laughs> so I like to accompany singers, uh, chamber music. I perform solo. Last two concerts I did was two different, totally different program with piano solo. So yeah, I like uh, uh, very complicated to complicate my life. <laughs> Busy. I really appreciated when you touched on the psychological aspect of tempo in your teaching, Carmen, like saying, you know, how usually one when you see um, a crescendo also, you know, you have to start softer in order to make this, this effect on the piano because, you know, it's a dying, once you press a, uh, the key, the sound dies. And also the psychological tempo, we were saying the when it's softer to go a little bit forward, and then when it's very loud to take your time and to seek larger pictures. And that's very interesting that you, you touch on the psychological part. And I also, the fact to keep the wrists very soft and, and flexible, which nowadays not so many people think of when you yes. think you see, especially when you think of a staccato, you think it has to be very exact French music. But in fact, playing with yeah, the, the fat of your fingers is actually a beautiful way to, to have all of these shades that you were talking about in Debussy. And it's wonderful teaching. I, I'm so impressed. Wonderful. Besides being a wonderful pianist, you are. And I know that you did a lot of Beethoven this past year, or you did... Yes. Yeah. Yes, well, it was the Beethoven here, and even with the pandemic, we were able to perform live the 10 sonatas uh, for violin and piano. Uh, it was a great experience, fantastic. Also to the between two. My wife is a violinist, and uh, so we share a lot of work uh, together. Uh, I love to perform with her, and this May we will perform the three Brahms sonatas in a concerto, so yeah, it's fun. You know, Lucille, you have... It's wonderful to do with your husband. No? When things work, it, it's like a pleasure, you know? It's, uh, it's like to go in, in Rolls Royce with, <laughs> you know, each other, uh, and everything just works. Exactly. Great musicians. <laughs> so. That helps too. <laughs> and yes, yes, Carmen, I read that um, you studied at the Menuhin School and you just graduated. And, and where are you now? Are you back in Spain? Right. How did you stay motivated? This is one question that really comes to my mind, especially when you're so young. What are you, 20, barely 20? And to stay motivated, especially in this pandemic, uh, you know, where 
I think in Spain you still have live concerts, but here in America, for example, everything's shuttered, all the concert halls. And so my first question to you is, how do you stay motivated and, and want to learn new repertoire and work? What keeps you going and do you have any projects? Just the fact of that music, it was it it is what makes me happy, and um, even during the pandemic, like uh, it, even more, it's it's curious that it, that during the pandemic, it, it's like there's nothing else to do. So for me, it was just like making music was sort of therapeutic. Um, yes. Um, yeah, about projects, I don't, because of the circumstances, I don't really, I haven't really thought about, um, I, I mean, I don't really have a, any projects right now in, in sight, because right now we're pretty, the situation is pretty bad here and live concerts um, actually are not an, it's not something that's happening right now. So, but I'm hoping that everything will go back to normal soon. Yeah, we all do. Well, thank you for sharing that. And Tommaso, you said you were uh, going to perform the three Brahms violin sonata soon, yeah. have your competition. And just by curiosity, um, the, how is your work affected on Zoom? Uh, how is teaching on Zoom? Or have you been able to teach in person? Um, well, actually, during the pandemic, I, I started, um, this is uh, interesting, because uh, teaching online, I was skeptical about that. Uh, I think this is not going to work. And then I saw my wife that she was um, teaching to some students in Italy. So I started to teach before the pandemic. Uh, like on on January, uh, two thousand uh, January in two thousand nineteen, I started to teach because I had one student in Valencia, and another one in Italy. So I started, and I saw that it worked well. So when the pandemic started, I just converted. I almost didn't lose any student. <laughs> I, I, thought, I think I think no. I think it's really great because uh, you can teach a lot. Of course, in person it's better because you can work better the sounds. You you hear the shades much better, but you can still communicate and, and help a lot even online. It's a great tool, and uh, yeah, I think and I actually think that it's much better. Really good teacher online that a not so good teacher uh, in person. <laughs> That's what I, I think. So um, yeah, so it's a great experience. I can teach on Zoom. I usually use Skype and uh, Google Meet also, but Zoom, it's a really good audio quality. Mm -hmm. And it, it also makes you focus on the vocabulary when you yeah. teach uh, virtually. You know, It makes you very much in check of exactly what you want to say. You have to be very yes. clear. You have to and describe then, better, yes. Yeah. Exactly. With, with, with Google Meet, I can also share the PDF. I can point out things on the score. I, I, it's really useful. Yes. Yeah, tools are also improving. I remember that at the beginning of the pandemic, the audio and the quality was much worse. Now it's getting better. Everything's better now. Exactly. Exactly. And I had a, a question for you. You had the the wonderful opportunity to study with actually pianists that were great teachers as well because you're a teacher in Italy Benedetto Lupo is a you know superlative pianist but also known as a wonderful mentor and you had Joaquin Chucaro like a fabulous pianist who also you know you know <laughs> yes I must tell that also Carmen had the great opportunity to have a, 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 a like a, some lesson in Madrid with Maestro Chucaro, and uh, I'm he was really happy to work with her because he told to me, and uh, she, she did a great job with him like uh, two or three years ago. So she knows uh, our great maestro. <laughs> he'll be watching this, so he'll. Okay, he'll yes, maestro. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> And I love the fact that you also talk of so much about sound and, you know, to look at the score, you know, that's so simple and basic, but many, you know, I'm guilty as well. You don't look at the score. Yeah, we are all very guilty. Yeah. 
everything is written down and if, and if you just follow what's written there's so much there and um and uh, yeah, so it was. Of course, you, you need to know all the tricks of realizations and all the aesthetic of the sound. But I really, I really learned a lot by Maestro Chukur, and I'm still learning because I remember what he said to to my lesson. Now I understand it much more. That's why I say I want to go back with time, not with a time machine, because now I'm I'm more I'm even more on, on on his side as piano playing. I really yeah. love his idea of piano sounds. Yeah, I understand why it's so good now. <laughs> well, even before, but now even more. <laughs> Thanks, Maestro. Exactly. And I appreciate the fact that you demonstrate so much, so it's even more clear, which is wonderful too. And that's the advantage of having a wonderful pianist slash teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which Thank you. Thank you. You don't usually come in such a great combination. Um, it was so wonderful reconnecting with you, Tommaso. You're really okay. a jewel, and we're so lucky to have you amongst us. Same thing with you. Thank, Thank you, Lucilla. And I, I so enjoyed your class. And Carmen, wonderful meeting you. And I look forward to hearing your progress. And you know, when this is all over, let's uh, let's meet, play for each other, and be merry again. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> and. Uh, Thank you so much for both of you. Your Thank time. you, Lucida. Thank you for your great work to support and to direct with Alessio the, the Joaquin Achucaro Foundation. They're really bringing his legacy really in a great way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye.